Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the DAO and Bala podcast. I'm your host, Eugene Kripi Amsui. We explore the web free space by talking with web free professionals who are build the industry with their minds and their hands. And I'm your host, Eugene Kripi Amsui. And please welcome my today's guest right now from Switzerland is Nicholas Genovese. Is product development, or it's, it's Token Gate, and the Token Gate is the tool, what app for tokenizing everything. And the main goal today is to discover, uh, to, to discuss the tokenization as a phenomena. So, Nicholas, it's great to have you on. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on. Yes. So, you want, I'll start with uh, Token Gate as a brief overview of my story. I, I was the first employee or one of the main stakeholders at TokenGate. And TokenGate started in 2018, 2019, when we thought everything is going to be tokenized, um, financial assets. We want to be the Web3 um, investment bank or Swiss Swiss bank in the Web3 space um, uh, to tokenize our hard hard assets and, and financial assets but our predictions are still slightly too slightly off um, so far and we've been just busy um, developing our tech and white label solution when it comes to tokenizing anything really so amazing I, you know i love the phenomenon of tokenization because it reminds me of the situation where we we may take anything from the real world, from the physical world, to transfer, to transform it into the uh, digital item, or token fungible or non-fungible, and to make uh, the token economy on the next uh, high level, where we are not tied with the boundaries of the physical world. How do you define uh, the tokenization as a phenomena, and why do you love it? I look at tokenization very similar to digitalization in the 90s um it it helps businesses uh to be more productive it will help the financial matrix if we can come to a perfect DeFi matrix where everything will be in uh, i don't know on the same platform and on the same blockchain platform and can be traded one jpeg for a share or one ether for shares and things like that our life um, as our portfolio management and things like that will have a totally new twist to that um, if everything can be tokenized. But the reality is is our current infrastructure is still pretty good um, when it comes to equities and debt. Um, The really high-end blue chip equities, they have no reason to be tokenized and hence why you will have um, a lot of the mediocre to too bad assets that want to be tokenized because they think it's a value add so we are in this um, weird situation where you get um, that you we get a lot of requests with like mediocre or bad assets who want to get tokenized and they think that has an impact on their value where really a bad asset will stay a bad asset even if it's on the blockchain well but nobody promised uh, that our path will be so easy we are still in the beginning despite of 30 years of having a bitcoin around us uh let's dive into token gate or mm-hmm. gate to tokens tell us more about what is it how did you come up with the with this idea, how it works in general, all, all the major things about Token Gate. Yeah, so Token Gate, um, so far we've um, been in really experimental. Uh, we've been very experimental with different things. Um, we did our first tokenization of a farm in Bolivia that was in 2018, um, where we tokenized revenue shares of a um, cattle farm in Bolivia and you have every biannually you get your revenue share paid out on a stable token um, which is a pioneering project that never really 
um, achieve the success um, we looked for, but it was, you know, it's a, it was an interesting use case, uh, which was done, um, which was our first one. And ever since we've been selling um, white label tokenization service to different companies. And these tokenization services were vary from, oh, you want to do an NFT. We, for example, did an NFT with the post. The, we did crypto stamps. We did NFTs for watch companies. We did NFTs for uh, car companies or even a profile picture uh, project for the city um, of Zug. You know, since the city of Zug is well known in the crypto space, um, they wanted to have their own profile pictures called the Crypto Cherries. So we're like very flexible and experimental when it comes to, to executing these different projects. And at the same time, now we have our own art program. So we basically have two business cases. One is like white label and consulting, and one is selling our own only chosen and curated um, digital art. And that platform is called Elementum, but it uses the same uh, tech stack as TokenGate. Who are the core cool members of the Token Gate team? Apart from you, uh, where are, where is Token Gate on its roadmap now? Uh, plans till the till the end, and maybe are you hiring someone? Any call to actions for our listeners? Maybe somebody will join. Well, um, our main stakeholders is a gentleman called uh, Ralph Klobishnik. He built up the Crypto Valley in Zug, um, the Crypto Valley Labs, and Crypto Valley Venture Capital. Um, in Zug, and he's now building his second ecosystem called the Crypto Oasis in Dubai. <clears throat> and that's um, the main stakeholder at TokenGate. Um, then we are looking for people in the marketing and um, in the in interns in marketing for NFTs and art sales. Um, that is currently an open position, but <clears throat> yeah, we have, um, at the moment, most of our projects are really in the art niche and in the NFT niche. So, yeah, you know, uh, I often hear the bold statement and, uh, the web free sounds like, uh, everything which could be tokenized will be tokenized. So do you believe that everything that is possible to tokenize will be tokenized and how this world, this tokenized everything world will be looking like? Do you have any ideas? I yes, think I, I, I think, I, think uh, I agree with that statement a lot. I think everything that will, can be digitalized, was digitalized or is still being digitalized. It doesn't matter if it's... Uh, you know, the bakery or the restaurant, um, or if it's YouTube, um, there's all forms of digitalization. And the similarly is going to happen with tokenization. I think natively Web3 or natively to uh, Web3 tokenization projects <clears throat> are going to do much better than trying to translate something from the old world into the new world. That's still going to happen. I think it's still going to have success at some stage, but the really big winners are the ones who are going to have nat build natively um, Web3 tokenization projects. You can imagine, I, I always compare this to like, um, you know, in Web2, you have YouTube and you have CNBC or MSNBC is that YouTube um, is natively from the internet and to make it digital, digitalize CNBC is never going to be as successful or as interesting as a natively built YouTube that um, allows creators directly on the internet to release their own YouTube channels like yourself. And I think that is that is going to be the same in Web3, that every everything is going to be tokenized and the really big winners will, are going to be natively from uh, blockchain and crypto. Oh, 
if I'm not mistaken, uh, token gate allows to tokenize uh, via fungible tokens and via non fungible tokens. Yes, am I right? Yes. Okay. So, what are your main thoughts on NFT? NFTs and as a tool and instrument for, uh, I would say, the building blocks for Web three. Uh, is it possible? Will it be possible to tokenize any fungible thing, uh, non fungible thing from the, especially from the physical world, such as cars, real estate objects, and so on? So for it's to, to this topic has become so popular. So, what are main thoughts on that on potential of NFT of tokenizing everything non fungible in the world? Yeah. Again, I think. You know, in NFT, we have our own uh, art platform, for example, called Elementum. And we have natively digital artists um, that, and we have natively artists who are painters and, you know, or even Picassos. And I get much more excited when I see a natively digital artist who makes generative art on the blockchain rather when somebody comes to me and says i have a 20 million dollar picasso can we tokenize it i think uh, for the natively digital art or the native um, digital object um, that makes sense for the blockchain as we know it today is um, a much cooler and much better use case than to tokenize a car or a painting or because there is just limited infrastructure and use case to to tokenize these things yet there's one or oh, one more thing uh i'd love to uh, hear your professional opinion regardless of uh, what envelope has been doing and working on a wrapping protocol on uh, wrapped nfts and a lot of it, a lot of people have been disappointed with uh the lack of utility of nft that's why they call it selling GPEGs. I don't agree with that. Nevertheless, it's the public opinion on that. And uh, on the conjunction of fungibility and non-fungibility of tokens, uh, there was born such a thing like a smart NFT or NFT 2.0. It consists of taking a NFT 1.0 or non-smart, <laughs> stupid, silly NFT, added to it any fungible tokens like a PUSD, USDT or ETH or some whatever they like for price predictability. Wrap it up with a set of features like a time lock, event lock, royalties, rental mechanic, and so on and so forth. And all this leads to technically the same NFT, smart NFT or NFT 2.0 with a set of new features which are absolutely usable and uh, for dozens of use cases in player and even uh, the selling tokens of startups to investors and a form of this property. I want to know your opinion. Hearing all of that, what do you think about that? Will it be useful? How do you find it useful for for for, for any use cases? Give me your thoughts. I think I think NFTs are really interesting and useful because of exactly that reason. Is that it's um, because they're on an open protocol. Um, you, you, they're very composable. So our cr other creators, collectors. You can, can can create things on top of that NFT um, without necessarily asking for allowance from the cre original creator. You can build things on top of these NFTs and change the outcome on these NFTs. And I like that um, a lot. You know, um, I think there is a use case, the use case for NFTs is probably the strongest one in Web3. A use case for digital collectibles is the strongest one in Web3 because it almost um, reinterprets the social uh, interactions um, the glo on a global stage, on social media interactions with digital collectibles changes everything, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I think, I think that, um, that that use case would... Uh, and if smart NFTs or building things on top or changing things or interesting aspects with IP rights and copyrights, I think I think I, I really am a big fan of these things. I'm okay. not a big big fan of NFTs that say if you buy the NFT now you will get A and B and C later from the creator, but I'm much rather a big fan of like. Uh, art nfts or generative art nfts that bring the value on sale like all of it um at the same time i like that a lot well 
going beyond NFTs, apart from that, what excites you most in Web3? People, technology, innovation, disruption, new economy. What else? Yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> touching again on NFTs, I think um, similar to YouTube, what excites me is that um, the freedom and democratization of creating things like allows um, will allow for a totally different socioeconomic world we live in. That the fact that you know we there is already this huge digital economy. If you look at Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, and that creators are getting paid to to do projects independently and get paid through these platforms. I think if we have um, more democratic platforms um, that run on the blockchain, uh, our world will look even like there will be even more equal opportunities um, to you know to make money. And at the same time, um, it's also something I don't like about Web three is that there's in every there it goes through hype cycles, and in every hype cycle. There is uh, ninety percent of people that are in it for the money, and ten percent of people that are in it for the value, and that um, there is just so much scam and hype and uh, money hungry people in the space. And that's something that I that's also that's a byproduct that comes with that, and that's something I don't like. Yeah. What steps should one of our listeners undertake? Uh, to start tokenizing everything with token gate, one, two, three, what should it do? I mean, <clears throat> uh, first, we usually like look at the business as a whole and see how and what makes sense. Um, we try and at the moment, we've been trying to bring a lot of really cool NFT use cases to um, for customer engagement. Um, and really have tokenizing projects for customer engagements that are low risk for your business and provide a value add for your customers or for your target market and um, have you know a cool value add in, into your business much rather than put your entire business on the blockchain thing since we think it's uh, too early. To do, to do that most of the time. Okay, so uh, uh, it has to, to start with, uh, I would say, uh, getting in touch with you and uh, the button, get in touch on your website. Go go yes, on yes. tokengate.io and just connect with guys and talk about, is, is it possible to tokenize your business in general? And what specifically? So this is a quite unique brand, I would say, the bespoke solution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's no surprise that being on web free space requires a lot of learning on an everyday basis, and one need to elaborate its personal learning strategy. How would you suggest to learn about web free, and what is your specific personal learning strategy? How do you learn web free? I mean, I usually go where my interest is. I, at the moment, I think Twitter is interesting. Um, you need to know, you know, which Twitter accounts to follow and are serious. I think that's very hard to find out. Um, you know, who can you trust on, on, on a Twitter space? Um, I think Web3 has many different aspects, whether it's finance, whether it's tech, social, or even art, or gaming. There's now we see sort of Web3 going into different industries. And I was focused on the interest industry that you like the most and uh, learn as much about that particular niche because you cannot learn about everything. Yeah, so I think that we is about uh, strong tech. If you are not tech savvy, you, are, you cannot uh, uh, achieve any goals. But this is not true. The people from different professions, different realms of uh, their business may find themselves in Web3 because it is a multidisciplinary realm, really, really. So I think uh, what you're looking for is and so that for them and you, you'll find yourself 100% sure. So Nicholas, finally, what is the best way to 
follow you personally on the internet, how to get in touch with you for yeah. purposes. You can uh, follow me on uh, LinkedIn on Nicholas Genovese, or you can follow me on uh, Twitter at the Merovingian Zero. At, the, at my Twitter account, you will know everything about generative art, that niche, since I'm a collector of NFTs and as well. And um, I would consider myself an expert in, in the generative art, AI art field um, as well, since I really am digging down in that, that niche on top of my job. Amazing. So another great person uh, has been on a podcast. It's Nicholas Genovese from Token Gate. Uh, thank you for being with us, Nicholas. Uh, please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, like, uh, subscribe, share. You may find all the links, of course, uh, in the description. So Nicholas has uh, been tagged so where uh, you have found this podcast. I'm Eugene Crypto MC, the House of Giant Valley podcast. Like, share, subscribe, and this is part of our YouTube channel because we deliver you unique content uh, talks with great speakers, with great professionals who build there of industry with their minds and their hands. Thank you very much for watching and listening and stay tuned for the next episode of the Dalai Bella podcast. Bye-bye. Blockchain. B-L-O-C-K chain. Digital money, smart contracts, NFT, IDO, decentralization, transparency. So many opportunities, but so many challenges. Some financial manipulators by their actions confuse blockchain solutions and block their development. The idea that the blockchain should bring copyright and royalties protection to the next level is quite old. But the realizations of this idea are not perfect at all. There is another problem of determining the value of a particular cryptocurrency or NFT. These and other problems need to be solved. Fortunately, the blockchain infrastructure is evolving. My name is E, Mr. E, and I represent the Envelope project. Many things have already been invented in the blockchain today. Tokens, smart contracts, platforms for creating your own coins, NFTs, exchanges for buying, selling and exchanging all these blockchain resources. Envelop it another step in the development of crypto technologies. The protocol that works with NFT and cryptocurrencies. The idea is simple but disruptive. Let's assume you have an NFT, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Using the Envelope protocol, you can wrap the original NFT accompanied with several tokens. Technically, you get a similar NFT, but what is the break for here? Once wrapped, the token has a number of additional features that were not available before. The minimal cost appears. It is provided with coins wrapped together with NFT. An asset wrapped with Envelope has a number of properties that allow the original author to receive royalties from the resale of that asset. Various rules can be applied to the wrapped token, for example, a lock period for unwrapping. It secures the asset till the determined moment or safeguards it from speculation during the high period. At the same time, wrapped tokens can be transferred and traded. These are just some of the scenarios for using Envelope. NFTs become more popular and the tools provided by Envelope expand the opportunities of NFTs utilization. Wide application possibilities are achieved due to the fact that, in addition to the protocol, the project includes a number of subsystems. The protocol provides functions wrapping and unwrapping. Oracle Mechanics provides asset valuation using analytical algorithms. Index provides a summary assessment of several NFT assets with the common criteria. The project has its own token, which connects all elements of the system. Altogether, this is Envelop, a tool in the blockchain world for building modern and secure systems in various fields. Find more info about the project on the website. Envelop, make your NFT valuable. Just practical, no hype.